back guys. This is Chasing the Wild, the only YouTube channel where you can get all your up-to-date hunting, fishing, and outdoor news. Hopefully you guys are stocked up on all your uh, deer meat from this past season because there's none in stores right now. I know that my wife is starting to get a little bit tired of deer meat, but she'll be alright with that. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the news stories. Alright, our first news story this week actually isn't a news story, it's more of a funny clip. I'll go ahead and throw it up here right now. Come on, three. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no, I ain't messing with you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I'm not messing with you. Mm -mm. But as you can see, a uh, reporter was trying to do a report in Yellowstone National Park and got a not attacked, but approached by a herd of bison and had to jump in his car. I thought you guys thought that was be pretty funny and I'm pretty sure I would do the exact same thing. I think it's weird that he jumped into his trunk uh, instead of just running in and jumping into the actual cab but either way I, I, a herd of buffalo approaches you I'm not taking any chances either. Alright guys this next news story involves a deer out of Wyoming. Now if you guys are familiar with mule deer you know they have what's called grazing like summer grazing grounds and then their wintering grounds. Normally mule deer will travel anywhere between 150 miles or so to go from their summer to winter uh, grazing ranges. One deer that was radio collared in Wyoming though, named Deer 225, almost went the, an extra 100 miles uh, when they were tracking it. It actually went 242 miles, uh, which is pretty incredible. There's actually a, uh, a map that you can follow that I'll go ahead and throw up on the screen where you can see how just how far this animal traveled. Much further than what mule deer are normally known to, for traveling. Pretty incredible and really makes you appreciate how hard it is sometimes to track down these animals. You might just be looking in the wrong area. They may have moved 150 to apparently 242 miles away from where you're looking for them. So I'm not a huge mule deer hunter, but if you guys out there who are, let me know if, if you've ever seen anything crazy like that. Alright guys, if you haven't figured it out by the number of news stories I do that cover sheep, I'm pretty big in the sheep. Never killed a bighorn. Hope to one day, but I still think they're incredible animals and I've seen them in person and they never cease to amaze you. Which makes this next news story a little bit more sad, at least especially for me. A herd of bighorn sheep in northwestern Oregon have contracted a disease called mycoplasma of the pneumonia. And again, I've said this in past videos, but pneumonia is a huge killer of bighorn sheep populations. Uh, I'm not sure why they're so susceptible to it, and I'm not sure why you, we can't necessarily vac vaccinate them against it, but for some reason that's pretty much the number one killer outside of nat natural predators of bighorn sheep, and it looks like it's going to wreak havoc on this herd up in northwestern Oregon. Oregon's uh, Game and Fish Department has said that they're going to refund everybody for their tags if you apply for these tags, and they're going to allow you to either build your points and apply for something else or to just apply for a hunt in a different region of the state but unfortunately this hunt has been canceled and it's because again the herd, herd is most likely going to suffer a, 
a lot of losses over this next year. Hopefully they can figure out a way to isolate the infected members of that herd away from the ones and try to at least save some of them. But I foresee that we're probably going to have to do some repopulation in this area. So it's probably going to be more than just one year before we're able to apply for that tag again. Unfortunate. So I said last week that we're trying to keep all the coronavirus stories out of our outdoor and hunting news, but unfortunately it's starting to affect outdoor and hunting news. A perfect example of that is that now 29 out of the 50 states, uh, state parks are now closed to any recreational activity. Either that or they have, excuse me, either closed or delayed opening until further notice. I know there's a big push right now for social distancing. Uh, I'll put up a link to where you can find the exact list to which states are actually banned and which ones are still open. And I kind of understand both sides of the coin again, because with social distancing, if there's a campground that's open and it's just packed full of people who have the week off from work, that's kind of defeating the purpose and still spreading the virus. That being said, if you're just going out to a remote campsite by yourself, you're probably doing more to socially distance yourself from others than necessarily staying in your house. So I kind of, again, understand what the government's pushing at here, that if everybody's in their own house, then they're definitely socially distanced. But at the same time, I know I would much rather be out in a cabin or camping out on a mountain right now instead of being stuck in my house. But unfortunately, the latter is true. I'm still stuck in my house because I have to work from home. But let me guys know what you think. Speaking of states that are closing their state parks, Washington has banned all recreational fishing and shell fishing within its state. Obviously, Washington's pretty a pretty hot spot, so it makes sense that they're canceling this. Apparently, there's been stories of crowded uh, boat ramps and lakes where people or rivers where people are fishing, literally standing next to each other, and it's kind of defeating the whole social distancing thing that we're trying to accomplish in order to lower the number of cases of coronavirus being contracted. What's what's kind of funny and juxtaposing to that is that Montana put something up on their Twitter called social distancing, which actually visually represents how far you should be distancing yourself from other people and it still encourages people to get out there and enjoy the outdoors in this time while they're mostly stuck at home and are having to work from home. It makes a lot more sense before anybody freaks out. It makes a lot more sense for Montana because obviously the population density in Montana is much lower and the opportunities for fishing in Montana are still uh, very big. So it kind of makes sense that they would more encourage people to go out there and enjoy the time off while they can. But I think it's just a funny diagram that they posted up on their Twitter. Again, you'll see it up on the screen, but it's, it's pretty funny. All right, guys, before we wrap it up, like always, we're going to go over the upcoming big game draw uh, hunting deadlines for the applications. First up on March 31st, we have Wyoming Bison. Next, we'll have April 1st. That's going to be in Montana, and that's going to be for the upcoming deer and elk season. On the same day on April 1st, we'll be in South Dakota, the archery-only, non-resident-only deer season application. So if you guys want to go stick you a big one, that's a good one to apply for. The next one, and this is going to be a big one, but it's, it's basically all species in Colorado, is going to be April 7th. Uh, again, it's all species, but just to outline them for you guys, it's going to be mule deer, whitetail, elk, antelope, bighorn, moose, and mountain goat. So if you want to go hunting in Colorado, uh, then that's the time to apply, April 7th. Colorado kind of has a, a really good over-the-counter tag system so don't feel pressured to dump a lot of money into Colorado there's still a lot of great over-the-counter opportunities out there but if you want to build points for some of these premier uh, trophy elk regions or just your bighorn uh, points then make sure you get your points in, or excuse me make sure you get your application in by April 7th all right guys that's gonna wrap up the news for this week again I'm Chase part of three dudes outdoors you can find us on Facebook I'll post a quick link and we're also going to be having some upcoming content on YouTube here soon on, a diff on our sister channel called Three Dudes Outdoors. If you like what you see, please give us a like and subscribe. Go ahead and leave us a comment down in the comment section. And come back next week for more Chasing the Wild.